In this video, we're going to learn how to return an array from a function in C. So let's try to do that. Let's try to make a function that returns an array. So we'll have here int, open bracket, close bracket, my underscore function, open bracket, close bracket. And for right now, we'll actually just leave the function body blank. And we'll try to save, compile, and run this. And look at this. We get an error. It says here, function cannot return array type int open bracket close bracket. So in C, we can't actually return an array from a function. What we can do though is return a pointer to an array. So let's first remind ourselves of the relationship between pointers and arrays. So let's declare and initialize an array of five ints. We'll have int array is equal to one, two, three, four, five here. So right now, array is going to be an array of five ints stored one after the other in memory. And typically we access the array elements using the index operator. So array at index three would access this value right here in the array. If we just use the array identifier like this, we would say that the array will decay to a pointer. So what we'll really get is the memory address of this first element here. And we could store this in a pointer to an int variable. So for example, we could have int star result is equal to array. So result is going to be a pointer to an int. And it's going to store the memory address of the first element in this array. And we can actually use result like an array. So I could say printf result at index three colon percent d backslash n. And we could output the value in this array at the index three using result. So we could save, compile, and run this, and we get that result at index three is equal to four. And that's because result is now storing the memory address of the first element in this array. We could actually print out those memory addresses. We could print f array colon percent p backslash n, and we'll output array after it's been decayed to a pointer. We'll also print out the memory address that result is storing. So we'll have result colon percent p backslash n, and we'll output the memory address that result is storing. And if we save, compile, and run this, we see that they store the same memory address. So this is going to be the trick to returning arrays from functions in C, is returning a pointer to the array. Once we've returned that pointer, we can store that pointer into a variable and then access it like an array. So that's how we're going to return an array from a function. So let's try to create a function now using this approach. We'll call the function set underscore array because this function is going to set all of the array elements to a particular value. The function is going to return a pointer to an int, a pointer to the first element in the array. So int star is going to be the return type for pointer to an int. The function will have a single parameter, the value that the array elements are going to be set to. So we'll have int value here. So first, let's try to declare an array locally, and we'll try to return a pointer to that array. We'll have int array underscore local five. So here we have a local array of ints of length five. The array is local to the function, which means it has the scope of this function. And at the end of the function, we're going to try to return array underscore local. We're going to try to return the decayed pointer to the first element in this array. And what we're going to do in the function is set all of the array elements to this value. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And we're going to set the array at the index i to this value that's been supplied. So this looks like it should work. We're declaring an array of five ints. We're setting each array element to the value that's been supplied as an argument. And then here, we're going to return the pointer to the first element in that array by allowing this array to decay to a pointer here. So let's try to call this function. Down here, we'll call set underscore array with the value four. So each array element should be set to the value four. And set array should return a pointer to the first element in that array. And we're going to assign that to result. So if, for example, we were to loop through and print out the array elements that result is pointing to. 
then we should get four for each array value. So we'll have printf here, result, percent %d is equal to percent %d backslash n. We'll output the index. We'll also output the value at that index. So here we have a loop that's gonna go through and output all the values in the array that result is a pointer to. So if we save, compile, and run this though, it's not going to work. We actually get a warning here. And here we get a bunch of incorrect values here. So what's going on here? Here it says address of stack memory associated with local variable array underscore local returned. So what's happening is this variable has the scope of this function. The lifetime of the variable is going to be limited to each individual function call to this function. So once the function returns, the variable is no longer going to exist. So that's why down here, when we try to use the array that result is pointing to, it's not going to work because that array no longer exists because the function has returned. So instead of returning a pointer to an array, what we sometimes see is a pointer to an array passed to a function, and the function will actually manipulate the array that that pointer is pointing to, effectively returning an array by setting the array elements to new values. So for example, with set array here, we could have an additional parameter here. We'll say int star array. And now we're gonna pass a pointer to an array to this function. We'll actually change the return type to void because what this function is going to do is manipulate this array directly. Only we're going to declare the array in the main function. So that way the array will still exist even after the function returns. We can actually get rid of this and get rid of this. The function is now going to directly manipulate this array that array is pointing to. So we'll set the array elements at each index to the value. And then down here, when calling set array, we can still supply four as the first argument. But now as the second argument, we'll supply a pointer to this array here. When we provide the argument array, it's going to decay to a pointer. The function set array is going to have a pointer to this array here as its second argument. It's going to loop through and set all the array values to four. And then down here, we could print those out. We no longer need to actually store anything into result either. So we'll have array and array. So set array does not return an actual value now. It's a void function. So that's why we got rid of int star result there as well. So we can save, compile, and run this. And now we see that all the array elements have been set to four. So that's actually what we more typically see. Now we can actually return a pointer to an array that has been created in the function if we use dynamically allocated memory. So what I'll do is include stdlib.h so that I can use functions like malloc and free that allow us to work with dynamically allocated memory. And I'll switch this back to just having a single parameter. And the function is again going to return a pointer to in it. And what we're going to do now is dynamically allocate memory using malloc. So local variables like int local underscore array, they exist in a part of memory called the stack. And when a function returns, a local variable like this ceases to exist. When we dynamically allocate memory, the memory is going to exist in a different part of memory called the heap. And the heap is something we manage. So until we call free to free the memory that we've dynamically allocated, that memory is going to be available to us to use. So right now we could say int star array is equal to malloc size of int times five. And malloc is going to return a pointer to an int that we're going to store into array here. And we're going to be able to access it like an array and use it like an array. Malloc is allocating space for five int values. We're multiplying the size in bytes that it takes to store an int by five to ensure we get enough space to store five int values. And then we can access array like an array in this function. And here, we can now return that pointer. We can return the memory address for the first int in this block of memory that we're using here like an array. Now, unlike with a local variable though, because this memory is on the heap, 
it's still going to be available in the main function, it's going to be available to use until we call free to free the memory. So down here now, we could actually store that memory address into the variable result. So again, we have int star result is equal to the return value of set array. And then down here, we could output the values in the array that result is pointing to. And we no longer need to supply array as an argument to the function either. So if we save, compile, and run this, we're going to see that result points to an array of five elements, and all those elements have been set to four. So it is working. Now, when using dynamically allocated memory though, it's very important that we remember to free the memory that we've dynamically allocated. So down here, I'd have to have free result. And this will free the block of memory that result is pointing to. If I didn't do this, I would have what's called a memory leak, where some memory has been set aside for a program to use, but a program is no longer using it. So that is a drawback to this approach. But to an extent, dynamic memory allocation is just part of C, and this is just something that we might need to deal with. Now there is one other way to do this. There's something called a static variable. And a static variable does not have the lifetime of the function call. When we declare a static variable, it actually has the lifetime of the entire program's execution. So for example, up here, I could say static int array five. So because we've used the static keyword here, we've turned array into a static variable. That means it has the lifetime of the entire program's execution. So even when our function returns and we return a pointer to this array, this array will still exist. That means in our main function here, if we store that memory address into result, we can still access that array. We can still print out its values and we can still use it. And we also no longer need to free it. So we can save, compile and run this. And we get that each array element in the array that result is pointing to has been set to four. So it is working, but with this approach, there's no need to dynamically allocate and free memory. I don't really recommend this approach though, because it could be confusing for people. And unless you're sure that you actually want the array to exist for the entire lifetime of the program, you're potentially going to have an array that doesn't need to exist in the memory for the entire execution of your program. So this is how we can return an array from a function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.